Hi, this is Shelly Hoffman with an ep uh, episode of Did You Know? And today I'm sitting here with our current mayor, Dick Clark, and he's going to give us some information on Paper Mill Island. Hi, Dick. Hi, how you doing today? Good. Um, Paper Mill Island, for, for people who don't know, and, and, and there, believe it or not, there are people who have come through our village who don't know where it is. It, it's not obvious when you look. I mean, it's kind of tucked behind the Red Mill Inn. And, but it's, uh, it's actually located in a, in a very historic spot as far as um, the north side is the dam. On mm -hmm. the south side is Lock 24. Um, and it's a very picturesque uh, right on the Seneca River. Um, it was uh, Brownfield years ago. Uh, I mean, by the name of the island, they obviously kept some of the history by calling it Paper Mill Island. But paper mills notoriously leave behind uh, bleach and all kinds of stuff that they use in the paper process. And there were other businesses. There was a boat yard, a guy who built boats and so on. So a lot of chemicals got left in the ground, and it was ruled that there, you know, you, we can't dig into it. Okay. So through HUD, which at the time was led by Andrew Cuomo, who's now our mayor or governor, um, it was well over a million dollars. Uh, that they came up with to cap the brownfield. And then with the help of uh, Anheuser-Busch, they built the amphitheater. And uh, so what we have now is a beautiful facility on top of what was basically wasteland. And when did that all take place? How long ago? Uh, it was officially dedicated in September of 2000. Okay. So it, it was about a two-year process. Um, it was actually the first project of the Clean Air, Clean Water Bond Program. Okay. Uh, and it was a big step I'm guessing it was a big showpiece for them to be able to say, look what we've been able to do. We took this wasted property and now we've turned it into a, uh, what amounts to a park in the middle of the river. Right, and it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, now, what some people would like to tell you is that this was built to be a concert facility. Okay. But it wasn't, from what everybody that I've talked to, um, you know, former mayor and current uh, trustee Andy Dryden, so it was not built to be a concert. It was built to be uh, a park with an amphitheater. That uh, the assumption would be that you know, if you had a, maybe a teacher would say, "We're going to take some of our class down there and get them, let some of them up on stage and have some parents come and have a little mini concert to show off the kids." Uh, okay. it, it made it somebody, maybe a guitar player, just sit up there on a on a uh, milk crate and strum for a couple hours, and people wander through. Or kids could do like a story time, maybe. Up could there, be, yeah. Like Any it, nice. people, whatever your imagination could could come up with, but mm -hmm. but really, it wasn't designed to house house two thousand people screaming and yelling in front of a rock band. <laughs> okay. uh, but it eventually, a few years into Paper Mill Island's existence, somebody said, "You know, we can make some money off of this. Um, we could probably put a band out there, charge three bucks, five bucks a piece." Uh, maybe have a stand that sells some hot dogs and some beer, and so our concert facility was was born. Um, people would love to say the village makes a lot of money off of these concerts, but it's been pretty well determined. Rick Presley, a former trustee, did a lot of work in studying the finance of the island, and by the time you figure in the maintenance um, of people going out there mowing it. Um, people planting flowers, uh, what you have to pay for at the time when you had to pay for security and so on, the, the village really doesn't make a whole lot of money. Uh, promoters make money and and you look, if you look at other parks, Mercer Park, Community Park, we don't make any money off of them either, but we continue to put money into them to make them better because that's what a municipality does. It provides facilities like that for its people. So if you're a young mother, and maybe your budget is tight, you know, you can always take the kids to the park. Right. And they can get on the swings, they can watch boats go by, be out in the fresh air, so that we always feel that's money well spent. And so it's the same with the island. Uh, within reason, I mean, we don't want people becoming millionaires at concerts and, you know, kind of thumbing their noses at us and saying, hey, you don't make anything. So, <laughs> it, it, you know, over the years we've tried to figure out ways that the village could get some money back. Uh, but it's never, uh, contrary to uh, public opinion, been a money generator. Okay. Um, and that uh, makes sense because it would need to make some money in order to be able to maintain it. But at the same time, um, 
you know, it, we, uh, we used it recently uh, for Seneca River Days. I know that Church on the Island uses it. So it's not just for concerts per se, and I know there's a concert series. But I look at it as a commu a place the community gathers. Right. Well, there's there's people that go out there on their lunch hour. Right. They'll take the bag of lunch and go out and sit on one of the benches, and I mean it's peaceful. Nobody, there's hardly anybody walking by you to bother you. Um, there's been Zumba classes yes. out there, <laughs> from what I'm told. Yes. Uh, I actually took part in one. Nice. Uh, so there, it, it, there's a lot of things. You know, the the, the uh, church on the island that starts up pretty quick. I think probably this, this past Sunday was the first was one. It, mm -hmm. And Fox. they've been, they've averaged, I think the last year they had like 50 people every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And they said it's spectacular. You know, you're out there, the sun has just yeah. come up. There's a nice little breeze. People from the boats wander over because they don't really know anything about local churches. And, and they'll come over and, and uh, the people who put it on have been quite pleased with the attendance. Um, you know. It, they wanted to come in and sign it up. We said, well, if you sign it up, it's going to cost money. Right. If you just have it in a... Now, if you get out there and there's a Zumba class at 8 o'clock <laughs> on Sunday morning... That's right. There, now it's whoever got there first. Now And now it's a fun... Uh, it's a moving and grooving church on the island. There you go. It. There you go. <laughs> um, now, while we may not make a lot of money, we hope that our businesses do, and that's the other sacrifice. You think if... You know, uh, Steve D'Arcangelo, our village engineer, and I have talked a lot about the fact that that our goal really is we try to get people into Baldwinsville. Right. And if a concert on a Friday night, say, has 1,500 people, and probably 500 of them are from Baldwinsville, and some from Liverpool, Camillas, whatever, they may stop at, at Pizza Man afterwards, grab a pizza to take home with them. They may go down to Sal's. They may stop in the Mini Mart get some gas, take some stuff home, uh, maybe before the concert, you know, they might maybe they go up to the Mohegan Manor and get some sushi and then wander out to the island. Okay. So the, the feeling is if we can get them into the village and they can see what we have here, they'll come back. Mm -hmm. So you may come on a Friday night and say, geez, I was talking to a guy here and he goes to the Angry Garlic and says, what a great restaurant. We, we got to come back, right. you know, when there's not a concert. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's that's the other write-off. You, you may not be making money, but your businesses are thriving, and so they don't go out of business. Right. You know, we don't have empty storefronts in, in many cases. And that, you know, that's always our goal is to not have those blank storefronts. Absolutely. And I can say from a business standpoint, I've talked to business owners who will plan something based around that concert series because they know people are coming into the village. Yeah. So maybe they have a sale or maybe they have their grand opening that day or they have something that they know additional people are going to see what's going on sure. because there's a concert happening that night. So well, it really is a win-win. Well, look at the walks we have. You know, the Margarita Fest mm -hmm. and the chocolate uh, beer crawls or the pub crawls, whatever they call You know, and, and I've come through the village at like, say, Five o'clock on a Saturday, one of these is going on, and I forget that it's happening. And I said, to "My wife, where are all these people? Where do they come from?" <laughs> and then you realize, "Oh wait a minute!" Then I, I'll see the, the death, Megan O'Donnell and Mike Shepard sitting there, and I know they work on the Margarita Fest, and so they're signing people up. And I said, "Oh, that's right. They had one of those crawls today, right. and they've been very successful. They get a lot of people, and then they hit, you know, they have seven or eight bars involved, and you don't have to drink." No. You can just go in and get your thing stamped and have a Pepsi or whatever the fare of the day is. Sometimes it's there's some food involved or they have little hors d'oeuvres or something. And, and everything like that makes your village a nicer place to live. Right. You work all week and say, yeah, I wish we had something going on this weekend. And so, well, we can, you know, we can go to the pub crawl. And you meet some people mm -hmm. and you're wandering around. You know, you're not just sitting down getting to see the village. And you're meeting, like you said, different people. Yeah, it's so... And you made a key point, uh, going back to Paper Mill Island, not every concert series has alcohol. There's family events with concerts. Um, so if you're not somebody that likes to go out and, and have like the whole um, alcohol scene, different things, um, there's there's a lot to do for the family as well at Paper Mill Island. Yeah, we have the Tuesday concerts, which start June 25th this year. Okay. Um, and there's eight of those. Uh, Beville Pep Band, is one of the weeks, um, you know, Hard Promises and some of those kind of bands that have gotten a reputation of being very good. People can see them for free. It's a Tuesday night. It starts at like 6.30, I think. 
It only goes for an hour and a half or so. They have mm -hmm. usually have a food truck, so you can take a couple lawn chairs, go grab a hamburger and a, and a lemonade, and listen to good music and be home before it's dark. Right, they have something to do on a nice day and get you out in the village. And a lot of times you see a blanket on the ground and little kids laying there reading books while the music's playing. Uh, it's it's very nice. So by the time we get done, um, we figure a probably have 22, 23 events out on the island in the course of the summer. Well, we hope that there's something for everybody. Um, some of the Tuesday groups are, there's a couple country, um, there's a couple rock and roll, there's a couple, I know Hard Promises is a, like a Tom Petty cover band. Uh, so there's a little bit of every kind of music for people. And what our promoter last year, uh, before last year, we would we were just like, if you wanted to be a promoter, and uh, I wanted to be a promoter, we come to the village and say, we'd like to reserve a date. And you pay the money to reserve it and so on. And if that worked for you very well, so next year you don't come back, I come back and I do a couple concerts and somebody else does a couple. And it was, we were getting, with all the competition, there's so many places that do concerts now. Right. Beacon Skiff and uh, you know the, the Sharkies and places like that. They all have concerts, sometimes two or three a week. Plus, the uh, amphitheater uh, down on Onondaga Lake. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, people would say, "Well, they're not competition because they're bringing in Zach Brown band. You're never going to get Zach Brown." But if you if you're working and you have a certain amount of money to spend on entertainment, Zach Brown band is going to be forty bucks for a lawn ticket. Mm -hmm. Right and 75 for a seat. Well, you do a couple of those, you may not want to spend $20 on our amp at our amphitheater, so you, you make a choice. Husband and wife are talking it over, well, let's do this one, we'll skip the one in Baldwin, so, you know, we can, that's so-so band, we, we'll go to the big concert. So we do have competition, and we finally decided to go to a single promoter, and we gave him some guidelines of what we wanted. Um, and he told us what he needed, you know, how many balancing, uh, at what point do we make start making money on ticket sales and that type of stuff. We came up with what we thought was a pretty good agreement. And the first year he did, he had about, I think, 11 concerts scheduled. Eight of them went off. Uh, one got canceled. Two of them got moved to the Westcott Theater because ticket sales were slow. Mm -hmm. um, and the weather is a bigger factor oh, with is. us. Wesco yeah. Theater doesn't get rained on. No. We do. Um, so we went with him. We, we felt pretty good about last year. We didn't have as many concerts as we would have liked, but we got response from people saying that uh, some of the bands were just awesome. That Gary Clark and uh, I can't remember. I didn't even. Some of them I had never heard of, and yet people were responding uh, on Facebook and stuff. Oh, this band is awesome. I can't believe they're coming to Baldwinsville. And there was somebody, and I apologize because I can <coughs> not remember who it is, but my kids were excited they were coming. I have teenagers, and they were excited. And they're, they, they were talking about it within our school district, mm -hmm. about somebody coming to Paper Mill Island. So it definitely has the hype. Uh, people enjoy it. We love the fact that it's, it's here. Um, the one question I did want to ask, and you kind of touched on it, but if somebody did want to use Paper Mill Island, you said they need to come to the village to try and reserve the date. Is it um, a... Do they need to come to a meeting? Is there a person they need to talk to? How would that they would, happen? They would come in and talk to the village clerks. Okay. Depending on what the event is, um, like we've had people say, we'd like to take our wedding pictures out there. Can we reserve it? I said, well, it's $1,500 to reserve the island. You may want to, since there's nothing going on, you may just want to take a shot of showing up Right. And hoping there's nobody, you know, having a frisbee contest or something out there yelling <laughs> and screaming. Jam. <laughs> you know, because it is a park. Right. Um, it's open to the public. It, it's the same in all our parks with the pavilions and stuff. You can take a shot at at not signing up the pavilion at Mercer Park, but if you get down there, there may be somebody having a picnic, and even though you have a party plan, they have as much right as anybody else. If you sign it up, we put up a, a card that says reserved on Saturday for Dick Clark or whoever signed it up. Okay. Otherwise, it's free game. And the same with Paper Mill Island. Now, the island's big enough 
um, if you wanted to take some kids out there were tap dancers and they wanted to pretend they were on stage and they could be doing that and somebody could be out at the uh, west end up, you know facing up river to take pictures and right. why would that bother them um, mm -hmm. there's room enough for two or three things to happen out there okay. uh, now if you have a concert going and you wanted to go out and have a you know, a reading done by a poet or something, it might be a little hard. But that concert would be on the schedule. The concert would be on the schedule. So, uh, and sometimes with the big concerts even, um, if they're coming on at 7 and you got something at 10, they're setting up and they're testing uh, speakers and amps and that type of stuff. And it, I'm, I think what's happened is people just ask, hey, we, we'd like to get some wedding pictures here. Take us about a half hour. Uh, we want to video it. Can we, how long are you going to be doing this? And we'll be done in 10 minutes. You know? Right. So we, we, there's multi uses, and, and uh, you know, like I said before, people go out there for lunch. Uh, there is no fishing off the island. For okay. people who think that would be a great spot to fish, it was kind of done because we, we're, we try to keep it clean. And, uh, you know, if you're going to bring people into the village to walk out there and show them off your amphitheater, <clears throat> and, you know, people casting fish hooks and catching people in the ear when they walk by or, you know, dead fish laying on. I was going to say the smell you know, sometimes. We, are, we get complaints about the dead fish on the bridge. Right. We don't need to add that to the island. But uh, Makes sense. It's, uh, and the other thing, another thing the island brings that, that we don't realize is fireworks. I mean, not that we didn't have fireworks before the island. You know, I remember as a kid there were fireworks, but they were usually attached to an event. Um, and now it's attached to island events, and so we had one this uh, for the Rotary's uh, Seneca River Days, mm -hmm. and then we'll have fireworks again July 3rd. Right. We didn't have any last year. Uh, we thought mm -hmm. there was a group planning a concert, and they said they were going to, they were going to have fireworks, and they got started late. And then when they started calling around to different fireworks people, most of them were booked up. Fourth of July is the busiest time. And the ones they were talking to were much more expensive than what they had hoped, so we ended up with no fireworks on the 4th. Right. Which didn't go over big yeah. with some of the populace, because, of course, the mayor hates fireworks. <laughs> and, uh, I, I heard that. Which okay. couldn't be further from the truth. I'm a big baby at heart. I love fireworks. <laughs> um, you know, people will tell you, I mean, I, I sat through the fireworks at Seneca River Days and ooed and odd like everybody else. Uh, so what, one of the things we told our promoter this year was we want fireworks. Mm -hmm. You got the third, the fourth, the fifth, and have to be on the fourth, but we need fireworks one of those days. Okay. So he's going to have it on July 3rd, which is you know the night before, which is kind of nice because it frees people up the for the fourth and they won't miss the fireworks. Yeah. So there'll be a concert, uh, an old traditional local band under the gun, which has played around here for years and very well known, have a big local following. They'll play, and then the fireworks will go off at, at uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock, whatever. And, uh, you know, not everybody likes fireworks either. There's no. people with pets, you know, their dogs go ballistic. Yes, but it is a community event, typically yeah. on the 4th of July, to have fireworks. So if you have not checked out Paper Mill Island, uh, July 3rd would be a good day to come down to the island and, uh, and check it out. We got a little bit of the history and the things that happened over at Paper Mill. Thank you so much, Dick, for coming in today and talking to us about it. If you have more questions about Paper Mill Island or there's something else that you want information on here in Baldwinsville, you shoot us an email at pacbtv2019 at gmail.com. Thanks again. Thank you.